as you can see here, I have four different soils laid out. Right here we have some existing soil from around my house, two gallons. Next, we have compost. I got this compost from actually the landfill, all free of charge. Next over here is, this is a pile of decomposed leaves. Also some twigs and sticks and uh, maybe some decomposed wood chips in there. Last up is, this is the existing soil that I had left over that he took out of my old uh, container, my smart pots. Okay, there's two other major ingredients that I'm gonna add to this is, this is the worm castings. Very important to add to your, to your mix, I recommend. And this one right here, 100% organic Alaska humus soil. So this will be mixed in as well. We have these two excellent ingredients, which I recommend putting in on top of all these other ones. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and put this in first. All right, here's what you're gonna need. I have one cup, measuring cup. This is a half a cup. I wanna show you the texture inside the soil. This is a really nice, nice stuff. So I'm actually going to add six total of the Alaska Cuba soil. Okay, that'll be nice. Let's move on to the uh, worm castings. I'm going to go ahead and cut this open. Let's take a look at this. So this is a little different texture. To we're just going to do three, so half the amount of the uh, Alaska humus soil. So three cups, that should be good. So now we're on to uh, adding the rest of the uh, natural organic fertilizer that we see here. You might be asking yourself as well, you can see that everything I have here is kind of ocean based. You got fish, bone meal fish meal, seabird, guano, kelp. So a lot of this is coming from the ocean and I kind of prefer that versus the land because a lot of times people are growing in um, chicken manure or some other type of cow manure and they don't really even realize it. But those chickens and uh, cows are eating GMO corn, GMO soybean. So the whole point of growing organic is to avoid any contaminants that you can. Although um, we're all on a budget, not everybody has tons of money to put into their soil. So that's kind of why I am adding this right here. This is the uh, compost from the landfill, very high quality, but this is saving me maybe $100 versus having to buy another compost at the store. And also down here, my existing soil from my old potted plants that again would cost another hundred dollars to get enough soil i'm saving probably two hundred dollars by saving my soil and also i don't have to throw anything away you know the old potting mix and just reusing what we have and adding to it remineralizing you know with the rock dust adding all the nutrients back into the soil you can buy a good high quality soil if you want to bypass all this but if you're doing a larger garden where you have a lot of plants you want to put in you can kind of create your own soil just as I'm doing so let's get on with this so we, we're gonna go ahead and open these up Omri listed so that means organic Institute so everything here is this is a pure organic gardening I'd say the only thing that is not 100% organic is gonna be my compost that I got from the landfill, but it is a very high quality. Again, it's cooked at 100 and over 150 degrees for several days, for several weeks, so it completely breaks everything down, down to carbon and nitrogen, and there's just basically nothing left. 
I still consider this to be organic gardening. There's no chemicals or fertilizers in here. So this uh, still, again, being budget conscious, this is still in the line of organic gardening. A very high quality product here. So you should have great success with this. So you got the fish bone meal. Look at that. You can kind of see it's just all a bunch of ground up fish right there, all the bones. Okay, I got one cup of this. Just dump that on. So basically what we're making is the super soil. I think a lot of people have heard of that, that term a lot, is super soil, you know, it's everyone's special mix. Be honest with you, uh, I change it up a little bit here and there and I add different things and there's actually other things I could probably add to it like uh, biochar, but it's really expensive, like one little bag's like $50. So certain things I'm just leaving out um, just because, you know, cost, cost restraints, we don't wanna just overdo it, I'm trying to make things cost effective. So, you know, things like rock phosphate, very inexpensive fertilizer. I'm not I'm not using a lot of it, but I'm using a little bit just because it's a, it's cost effective. And uh, everything over here, I think, is very high quality ingredients that I'm adding. So, in return, you're going to get very high quality plants. All right, let's get um, the fish meal, which is a little different than the uh, fish bone meal. The fish bone meal is going to be a little better for the flowering. Uh, and root, root vegetables, so flowering plants, we're gonna like more of this. This one has more nitrogen, so that'll help it grow. So I'm doing a little bit of one cup of each. Just go on to this one. So this is a seabird guano. They eat fish, so basically everything you see here is fish in some way or another. I do emphasize, I do want to emphasize that, you know, the more biodiversity you have in your soil, the more organic um, nutrients you have in there, I think the better you're going to, better results you're going to have as well. Okay, next is the kelp meal. Let's go ahead and get that. Again, another sea, sea product from the ocean, which I kind of prefer. Okay, here's the seaweed. Now this is one of my favorites. He sings, this smells really good too. I love the smell of it. Again, everything doesn't have to be exactly perfect. This is kind of, you can tweak this. This is just, I probably change it every time as well, but this is kind of the mixture I'm doing. This, this season, it's, it's spring here, and I have a lot of vegetables and things I want to transplant. So I'm going to be making this mix, use up all my soil, and this will be everything for the basically the rest of the season. So. This is not mixed into the soil. This one is just a liquid um, soluble seaweed extract powder that will be added afterwards. So you gotta have the 17, you know, the, uh, the large num larger number there, that's gonna make sure you have plenty of the potassium. Because if, if I left this one out, I may not have enough potassium in this mix. So rock phosphate here, let's go ahead and grab that. Again, a very inexpensive fertilizer, high in uh, phosphorus. So if you're on a budget, this is something that uh, is very uh, inexpensive. This is probably one of the cheaper fertilizers you can buy. And But it's uh, a natural source of phosphorus and calcium from the earth. So, And it's organic. So with these, the rock phosphate and the, on my rock powder, my volcanic rock dust and the uh, cascade rock dust, I'm gonna just do a half cup. So I don't think I need quite as much of this. Okay, so I have my rock phosphate here. You can see it just looks like a rock powder. It's uh, very light, has no smell, but this will, help have really good flowers and blooms and fruit. All right, so we got a half a cup of that one. The last one here is uh, humic acid. So these are the, the remains, ancient remains uh, mined of uh, plant life from hundreds or thousands of years ago. 
this works really good too. So I'm using a half a cup. It's a little crisp, kind of like little uh, little chunks. You can kind of hear it. Again, no smell. This stuff is. I've used this a lot. Um, it's a great little additive. All right, on to the next one. Let's take a look at this. This is almost has like almost like purple purplish brown sprinkle that on a lot of different colors things going on in the soil this is just going to be an amazing soil curious to um, hear about what you guys are using in your soil as well if you have something else you would add to this mix if you think that you uh, I'm missing something you could something I could add to it or I'm putting too much of something in or not enough. Curious to see uh, what you guys think. And uh, if you do, you know, put a comment below and tell me what I, you think I should add to this to make it better or what I should, could leave out. So this is the other, the Cascade uh, Glacier Rock. So this comes from glaciers. So we had volcanic, then glacier. It's just everything about this mix is just the biodiversity of this is so amazing so many different sources i'm kind of just going with what i think is right based on past experience oh wait one more you don't want to forget this i don't think i put the insect brass in yet all right this is one of my favorite fertilizers but it happens to be the most expensive as well the insect frass it smells like candy like a sugar it's basically exoskeletons of insects all right the next step will be to take all of these fertilizers and, and amendments that we just put in here we're going to take this tray dump it on the ground on top of the soil base that I showed you earlier and we'll get the shovel out and start mixing. Okay, you can see I just dumped out all the fertilizers on top of the pile here. So let's go ahead and start mixing this up. So I'm gonna mix this full amount for about 10 minutes because you wanna make sure it's completely 100% blended. Some people will uh, not spend the time blending it and it won't you'll get inconsistent uh, soil there just go around and around you want to go around your pile round in a circle and make sure you push all the way through all right here's the soil here all blended up So that's a mixture of all those different ingredients. It's got a really nice texture to the soil, very light and airy. The roots are gonna grow through this so, so nicely, especially when I added those decomposed leaves. It's very airy and light. It adds some nice texture. And then there's the sand in there that gives it a little structure. And then all the compost, which makes it kind of gooey and all that organic nutrients. And the existing soil that has that perlite. So it all, overall, this is just incredible stuff. Let's see how um, plants grow in this. All right, guys. Well, enjoy your uh, planting, and let me know uh, what type of soil mixes you guys like to use, or what you would do differently, or what you would add to this. But growing your own food. I think we want to do it the best as we can possibly do it to get the highest quality. Everybody wants the best tasting, most nutritious food, and you gotta start with the best soil. So this is it right here. Let me know if you have uh, any questions or comments. Leave a comment below and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching, bye bye.